Joining us is the president of the Indian Football Rugby Union, Mr. Rahul Bose. Also, firstly, thank you so much for speaking to us here on the Times Network. I want to begin by asking you, could you tell us a little about uh, the team's journey to qualifying for the Asian Games and what does it exactly mean for the players and uh, for the rugby uh, union as well? Well, the journey has been, uh, it's a, you know, it's a pretty, um, pretty straightforward journey. It all depends on um, how well your uh, team is doing in Asia, because as the um, uh, IOA and MYS has very clearly said that uh, your team should be ranked in the top eight in the tournament. So um, given the field that we have in the Asian Games, our team is ranked number seven. And once we got that official uh, written confirmation from Asia Rugby, that's when we actually put in our um, request uh, for uh, the women participating in the Asian Games. Uh, it's sad that the men are, don't haven't made the top eight. Uh, it would have been wonderful if the men could have participated also. But they haven't, and they'll have to wait for the next Asian Games. In terms of the uh, journey, every single year, there is um, there are Asian tournaments on the Asian circuit. And uh, uh, our women won the silver last year at the Asian Trophy. And, um, you know, given the, it's a little complex, but given the field that's right now available for the Asian Games, the number of uh, nations participating, etc., our ranking is number seven. So in that respect, it's a, it's a great moment. It's a great moment for uh, Indian rugby. It has happened before. Let me say this. It has happened before in 2010. Our men and women played the Asian Games. But after that, for the next three editions, we haven't. 14, 18. And of course, this is the third edition after that. So um, it's a great moment. I think it's a, it's a culmination of a lot of uh, very hard work put in by the team. I'm sitting in front of you and, uh, you know, and, and sort of taking some of the credit. None of it goes to me. All of it goes to uh, the people in charge of the high performance vertical. Uh, what we did, uh, well, sorry, I didn't get your name. Karishma. Karishma. Karishma, what we did was we instituted about 18 months ago a high performance program that uh, uh, basically looked at the best practices from all over the world of how to create a, um, a world class um, rugby team. And uh, we've picked from the best practices from all over the world. So today, for example, we have a national strength and conditioning coach. And she's a woman, which is wonderful, Surabi. We have a national um, a psychiatrist, psychologist, who looks at the mental health of our athletes. And that is Shreya, who is also a woman. So that's also wonderful news. Uh, we have a national dietitian in, uh, in Ananya, Ananya um, Somani, who does the, uh, the diet of all the players in the off-season. On season, when they're playing in camp, the diet is nutritionally calibrated. But off season, uh, are, you, are you from Tamil Nadu? Are you from Haryana? Are you from Bengal? What are your diets and how to adapt the protein intake and you know the entire balance of the diet? So that was one part of it. The personnel we put in were all very, very well-equipped uh, personnel. Uh, our coaches are from South Africa. Anybody who knows anything about rugby will know that it's New Zealand, Australia, England, South Africa, some of the Northern Hemisphere countries that have the best coaches. So we haven't stinted on that either. Apart from that, of course, we have the Abhinavindra Targeting Performance Centers, uh, five of them across the country, where we've signed up, signed an MOU, where we can use that for rehab, diagnosis, sports science. Uh, we have a national physiotherapist who's also a woman for the women's team, uh, uh, Lizanne Pace. So she's, she's wonderful. We have one for the men also. So all in all, we've put together a 360 degree kind. We're also paying our players, Karishma. I think this is something that people know now, but if they don't, they should know that every camp that we have, including the tournament that the team goes for, as well as bonuses for winning, uh, we, you know, a girl, a woman, and girls under 18, the women, will walk away with about 50, 60,000 rupees after a month of, of, of taking part in the camp and making the team, which sounds like a very little sum of money, but for us, it's a lot of money and it's something that is we are on our way to becoming semi-professional and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, if everything goes goes well, then fully professional in, in the years to come. Well, the team, of course, is in training at the moment. They are uh, wanting to give their best at the Asian Games. Uh, but what are your realistic expectations from 
uh, the team that is going to be representing India at uh, the Asian Games. Everyone talks about, you know, winning the gold medal or being number one. Uh, but, you know, what do you tell the team in terms of expectations, in terms of the pressure uh, that they may face there? Well, I think that uh, different teams react differently uh, to messaging. Uh, some teams, the messaging should be, look, go there and do your best. Don't worry about the result. Some teams perform very well when you say that, look, we have to get in there and we have to, you know, we have to dominate and win. And they respond to that. So I think it's a, in different times, the very same team could have a different message. The messaging is very clear for this particular team. Uh, they have told us they don't need to be mollycoddled. They've told us uh, we don't need to hear, oh, go there, do your best, enjoy yourself, have a laugh and come back. And, you know, don't worry about the result. They do. They want to worry about the result. This is the messaging that's come very clearly from the ground. We listen to our players very, very carefully for everything. We ask them, we chat with them. We, we it's, it's a two-way street when it comes to uh, talking. We have some very senior players, including one of them who's a, a board member of, from the Athletes Commission, who's also part of the training squad right now. So we don't need to uh, devise a way to motivate the players. We listen to what will work for our players. In this case, the message that they've given us is very clear. We know what we're going there for. We know that it's going to be tough. Uh, we do not want to be mollycoddled outside of everything that you provide us. Uh, we want to go there. We, we want to go there and we want to go there to win. So they're very much in that mode. Um, having said that, the best you can do, Karishma, is to create all the conditions for a player to go onto the field with no load, no psychological load, no physical load, no mental load, which is a load outside the field. The load on the field is enough. So we, we understand and recognize that. And that's what we do. All we, a bad referee can make you lose a game, Karishma. You know, it, it's as simple as that. So I think that everybody is very focused, very realistic. I just had a long session with the women uh, when I was in Kolkata uh, two days ago on the first day of camp and we, we had a chat and they were doing their bronco tests and all of them were lying on the ground, panting away. But I spoke to the strength and conditioning, uh, Surabi Date, who's the strength and con conditioning national coach, and she said they're in better shape than they have ever been when they come on the first day of camp. As far as medal prospects go, I should caution everyone here right now. Look, we're seated seventh. So I think a superb result would be, you know, if we were to make the top six or the top five, we would be punching above our weight. What's most important is to realize that people will be watching this game and I'm hoping it's on television. Uh, that's up to the Asian Games Organizing Committee and, and you know, the media. Um, they will be watching us play and it will be a revelation. This I can guarantee you. It will be a revelation. It will be a revelation to see. Can I ask you why you're getting emotional about it? <laughs> see, this is a sport that's uh, not very well known. Uh, this is a sport that um, is young. This is a sport, 99% of our players are very poor. That's not, it's not coming from a sense of pity. It's coming from the journey that uh, these women have made. And, uh, you know, when you see tribal girls from straightened circumstances rising and playing the way they do, when you see uh, a lot of our girls, are maybe perhaps not tribal, but certainly rural poor, and you see uh, the kind of character and the kind of winning instinct and the kind of never say die, uh, temperament that they display. If you have played like I have for my country for 11 years, you, you feel for just the victory of crossing that line and playing for your country. So I think that is uh, what can I say? I mean, it's not just being board president now for the last 18 months. I think it's being part of the Indian rugby ecosystem from the first test match we played in 1998, where, you know, nobody got paid. It was ad hoc. It was just, you know, getting together and, and playing as best as you can, getting thrashed. And now actually asserting yourselves 
uh, yourself on the Asian circuit and hopefully tomorrow on the world circuit. So I think that I'm reacting emotionally to that journey, to that uh, 25, 25 years uh, of that journey. And uh, I think, therefore, we, this board, this federation today, uh, these players, these officials, we we stand on the shoulders of, you know, so much of sacrifice. So I think that's where I'm getting emotional because it's that journey. If the country, if the country gets behind these women, it will mean the world to them. You know, I love this game. I love this country. I've been playing this for 11 years. And today, I just consider myself fortunate to be part of a team that is, is there. I mean, we will all be in Hangzhou. And Rao, let me ask you a final question. I know it is uh, getting a little overwhelming for you, but the Asian Games no, no, don't milestone... Worry, don't worry, I'll, I'll be fine. Uh, Asian yeah, Games please. milestone, of course, has been uh, breached, but I want to ask you, what is next for... Uh, the team, everyone has to be far-sighted because they're also looking at Olympic Games, Paris 2024. So those discussions also, of course, need to start. Yes. So um, we fixed uh, one and a half years ago a goal for ourselves. Uh, it's an improbable goal, but uh, what's the fun of having a goal that's easy to achieve? So in the last 75 years, Karishma, there's been no Indian team that has actually made the Olympics except hockey. So we would very much like to be, uh, if not the men and women, perhaps just the women, I don't know, we're going to go for it, for 2028. But what happens is that there's a quota system. Uh, there are nations in terms of the quantity of nations that can make it from different parts of the world, Asia, uh, you know, uh, Europe, et cetera, et cetera, Africa. So there is a quota system in Asia, and we have to reach uh, the top one or two in Asia to qualify. Uh, the feeling is that if we are seven today at the Asian Games, hopefully in the next five years till 2028, we will get to the top one or two. It will require tremendous amounts of money, tremendous amounts of dedication, unfailing and unswerving dedication, you know, hard work on behalf of the players. But that's the goal. So 2028 is where we fixed our sights. Uh, you know, as again, if everything goes well, great. If not, then I can guarantee you. No one's going to stop us in 2032, and that's for sure. But uh, I'm impatient as a human being. Uh, we all like to see results coming up soon. So fingers crossed. I think this step is a very important step. This step on, uh, on, on an international podium with a multi-sport event like this, normally we play bilaterals or we play Asian, you know, four or five teams uh, uh, in different tournaments. But this is a big one. And I think that, uh, you know, it's... Depending on how this goes, I can get back on, on air with you after this, uh, after September 26th, and tell you exactly how we stand in our plans. I do want to genuinely, and this is not because I have to, Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sport has been so kind to us in terms of the funding. Uh, the Sports Authority of India has been so good to us in terms of you know making things available to us. We've had encouragement from the Indian Olympic Association, everybody from 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 these from these uh, from these from these various government agencies and our sponsors, we're not on television. We're not a big sport. You know, they're not millions of us of, of of kids wearing our jersey today. But that day will come, and so therefore, all our sponsors and all our all the government agencies believe that yes, this is a federation that is on the right track. What we want to make sure is our processes are transparent and near perfect, and that we are absolutely solidly ethical professional and what we say is what we deliver that's the best that we can do right now the rest as you say is up to uh, the referee the teams the weather and, uh, and 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 how things shape up and hangs out well Raul, thank you so much for speaking to us and for your time he's wishing the rugby team all the very best for the asian games thank you thanks very much appreciate it